Evandy is way too powerful, but not really. It's a bug grass type with some mediocre stats other than 103 attack and decent 92 speed, but it does have the ability Chlorophyll to double its speed when the sun is shining. It also gets to take advantage of the pretty exclusive move Felstinger, which is a 50 power bug move that has a pretty crazy effect of boosting your attack by 3 stages if you knock out the target with it. We have the potential to run Swords Dance to boost and try to Felstinger some unsuspecting low health opponents, and it can also use things like Stab Leaf Blade, which is pretty nice, along with good coverage and knockoff, Triple Axel, and even Terra Blast Fire if you're feeling crazy. Levani is often overlooked, but we're gonna try to show that this Mantis is not here to play games. So the thing about early route bugs is that they're designed to like show you how evolution works and then they're just abandoned. But I am going to be showing some love to our grassy bug friend here. Now if you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I would love to have you as part of the journey. And before we get into the match, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. If you're living in 2024 and somehow don't know what a VPN is, you've come to the right place. A VPN is a virtual private network that allows you to keep your personal data private, but also comes with some super interesting benefits and features. Public Wi-Fi networks can be sketchy, and easily turning on the Surfshark VPN with one click will keep you safe from any networks by encrypting your online data. But one of my favorite features has got to be fighting against price discrimination. When you're looking for flights or hotels, websites use your history and data to show you pricing catered to what they think that you'll be fine with paying. But by using the VPN, you can ensure that you're getting the best price every time without the nonsense. There's tons of other benefits, but one of the best is that one Surfshark subscription gives you unlimited devices. You can even share your account with whoever you want and you'll be covered on any devices that you feel like. There's also Surfshark Antivirus, which protects you from viruses, malware, and tracking of ad companies. You get immediate notifications if you download anything sketchy, along with custom protection to schedule regular scans to keep you extra safe. So if you're not convinced already, go ahead and hit that link in the description of the video and use code Hayden to get an extra four months for free, along with a 30 day money back guarantee. And with that, let's go ahead and get back into the battle. All right, so my guy is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Electrode. This thing always looks like he knows something that you don't. What I do know is as I lead off with the Samurott, while I am a Salt Vest, I don't really wanna take either a Thunderbolt or a Volt Switch. So I just decided to switch right into the Torkoal here. Now Electrode a lot of the time is going to be running like a Choice Specs, and that boy is a fast pivot fella, but I just decided to go into Torkoal. I don't have a whole lot of options, but I can at least get that Drought going as it's going to be pretty important here. So they do actually Volt Switch, does a nice little chunk of damage, and now they can decide a matchup here. So I'm put on the back foot a little bit in terms of kind of the start here as they have a bit of the, you know, matchup initiative. So as they decide to go into the Donphan here, I imagine they probably just set up the Stealth Rock. I decided to expect them to rocks, and I just set up the Stealth Rock of my own, but it turns out they're actually going to end up going for the knockoff, which is a little bit annoying just because now that it gets rid of my Heat Rock, so the next time I come in, this side is only going to stay up for the five turns as opposed to the eight, which with this team, we're obviously going to need the sun. We're chilling on the beach, and we're just trying to make it a sunny time out here. And as I decide to switch out now, I figure they probably Earthquake. And uh, we actually fit in pretty nicely around the old scenery with the Alolan Executor. So I do come in on an Earthquake, I take it super nice. And this presents a little opportunity to try to get the Long Neck Boy going. So as I imagine they probably don't stay in here, I can kind of get up a free substitute and see what they want to go into. They are going to end up switching and it's going to bring in the uh, Three-Headed Dragon. Hydreigon comes in and we're obviously both a couple of Dragon Fellas because you know, literally for whatever reason this thing is a Dragon type tree. and. I get up the substitute for free, which is nice. Now, the problem with this matchup for me is that I just don't have dragon coverage on this matchup, which obviously they don't know about, so I'm going to try to kind of take advantage of that. But as they go for the dragon pulse, that is, of course, going to break the substitute, which is fine because that's exactly what we're looking for here. We're trying to get knocked down into berry range. And as that does break the sub, this now allows me the opportunity to set up the trick room. And now, all of a sudden, slow-ass tree is fast-ass tree, and we're looking pretty solid here. So the thing is, I do still need some a little bit of boost and harvest action, so as I know I'm faster, I can go for a substitute. That is going to knock me down into Pattaya Berry range. Not only does that give me a nice little special attack boost, but I also get the sub up so I'm safe from the next attack. And we've still got a handful of Trick Room turns left. So another Dragon Pulse is going to go ahead and break the sub, which again is fine, 
because this executor is working with this guy is straight up working the damn farms I can then uh, activate my harvest ability which just brings back the Bataya Berry and since I'm already in pinch range it just immediately is gonna go ahead and eat that so I'm sitting now at plus two special attack with the trick room up this executor is looking quite scary the thing is I obviously don't have the dragon coverage but I imagine they probably switch out here and if they don't I decided to go for the Terra water to be able to you know be hit by a neutral attack and then hopefully get enough back with a giga drain so as they end up actually switching into the muck this thing is having a damn disco party over here and I am actually gonna end up going for the Terra water so the problem with the muck matchup is that this thing has way too much damn special defense a lot of the time it's gonna be assault vested and now I'm just randomly gonna be a freaking fountain tree, which does at least now allow me not to be hit by a super effective like poison jab. But also the Giga Drain pretty much doesn't really do anything. It also just doesn't really give me much health back. And more importantly, it also gets me out of Pattaya Berry range because as I do harvest it, now I'm actually no longer in that 25% to where I can activate it. So now I just decide to go for the flamethrower in the sun. It's gonna do some decent damage, but again, this thing has to be assault vested because it doesn't take much. Also, I probably should be running Terra Fire. I've been messing around with uh, kind of the Terra options there just to boost Flamethrower would have been great, but it probably wouldn't have grabbed the kill anyway. Regardless, Executor goes down and my Pattaya Berry ends up on the freaking ground. And also the sun goes away. So the palm tree did not end up working out according to plan. If you are interested in that Alolan Executor, I definitely recommend watching my most recent video before this because that thing is crazy. So I decide now to switch into the Torkoal just because I want to get that sun back up. And now I'm out here just figuring out what is going to be kind of a win condition. So as I go for the Lava Plume there, it's actually not enough to kill this thing. And also the Gunk Shot doesn't kill me. It was kind of an... I honestly would have preferred Torkoal to go down there just to take advantage of the Sun Turns. But now we just have to waste another one as the Shadow Sneak is going to come through and takes care of the Torkoal. So bad news is the Sun is only going to stay up for a limited amount of time because I don't have that Heat Rock anymore which is quite unfortunate, but it is time to see if we can get uh, the Lee Vanny going here. We're in the sun. I'm actually in a perfect spot here as the Lava Plume didn't kill this. It actually is going to put it in range to where a Fell Stinger should have no problem grabbing the knockout. So obviously I'm faster. The Fell Stinger is going to go ahead, not only take out the muck, but then we're like, oh, hell yeah. The boy has fallen. And what has not fallen is this attack stat. We are now going to boost drastically. We get a plus three attack boost and honestly this is a quite a scary bug that's sometimes all you need is a little fell stinger action so as they decide to go into the back scalibur they are going to have the coverage with the ice shard the good news for us is that we were at full hp so we can actually live it and then a triple axle if i can connect with three is going to take care of it and that is going to be a dead dragon so that's actually extremely clutch we do a little spin a and hit him with our pointy ass legs and take care of one of the scarier threats on the team so at this point, we are working with limited sun time, but I mean, as long as the sun is up, there's kind of nothing they can do versus uh, our freaking sword bug here. So as they decide to go and do scary dragon number two, I don't even have to triple axle because I can actually fell stinger chlorophyll just running through the veins and that is going to be a dead high dragon. And not only that, but we also get ourselves to plus six attack and the sun goes away. So that is the extreme downfall of that knockoff on Torkoal. We would have had a couple more turns to basically sweep the rest of the entire game. But as they actually end up switching into Inteleon here, this is a problem because this skinny ass lizard is pretty damn quick. It does actually now outspeed and sadly an ice beam is gonna take care of it. So we did go on a little bit of a buggy rampage. We we're able to take care of some big threats, but now we have a very interesting late game on our hands and I do got to try to make up for it. So I'm going to go right into the Slitherwing. Now, the good thing about Slitherwing is ordinarily we have Protosynthesis to boost our attack with a Choice Band. Nothing wants to take a first impression. It turns out you don't even need the Protosynthesis. That is just going to straight up take care of the Inteleon, which is amazing. And now they are down to two Pokemon left. So they can freely switch into the Donphan here. And that is obviously a problem. I'm locked into first impression, so I'm literally forced to switch out here. But I can just pretty easily go into the Samurott. So I know that the best this can do is probably Earthquake, which I know I can definitely take at least one of. And then I can hit back with a little, little Aqua Cutter. So it turns out they're actually going to go for the knockoff. Gets rid of the Assault Vest, so my vest is on the freaking floor, but hey, it's hot as shit out here anyway, and Samurott didn't really need it. Actually, it would have been kind of nice, because their final mod in the back is going to be the Electrode, so I probably now cannot live with Thunderbolt. But I can at least go for the Aqua Cutter, and honestly, main goal at this point is prioritizing Chip on the Donphan. This bulky fella 
will be a problem for my mons in the back if I don't have at least some good chip there. And it turns out I actually end up living an Earthquake, which is super clutch, because now I essentially just get the free kill with the Aqua Cutter. We slice him and dice him right to the old trunk, and that is going to take care of Don Fan. So we have a very interesting kind of uh, end game here where their final mon is going to be the Electrode. So obviously they can bring in the Smiling Orb here. I'm just going to go ahead and ponder him real quick. And I'm like, yep, confirmed. That is a dangerous bomb there. So I essentially have to let this thing knock me out. But as we switched out this Slither Wing, that's kind of the win condition at this point as I can come back in. And it does not matter how fast this boy gets rolling. Even if it was on a damn hill, my first impression with that priority should be able to clean it up for us. So down goes the Samurott, exactly what we're looking for. And back comes the Slither Wing. We are ready to slither our way into a nice little first impression and look huggable in the damn process. So, with that choice band, it basically guarantees that this frail boy is gonna get knocked the hell out, and that is gonna be the end of the game. So I thought that was a super clutch match, and honestly, a very fun one kinda right to the end. And uh, that is gonna do it for game number one, but you already know that is gonna lead us into the next match because we are not done yet. And also, if you've been enjoying the video so far, or if you've just made it this deep into it, you should probably just hit the like button while you're there. It only takes you a sec, and YouTube, for some reason likes when you do the button. I don't know. Just smack the button for me and let's go ahead and get into the next game So this time my dude is gonna go ahead and lead off with the fake-ass fighting Pikachu the Palmot and buddy's arms are looking ridiculous So I have the Torkoal as a lead here to set up the drought as early as possible And also potentially get some stealth rock and just do my turtle thing over here So I imagine this probably doesn't really want to stay in here as I'm just gonna take this opportunity to get up my rocks and they are going to end up switching out into something a bit more fit to handle the turtle here. So it turns out it's actually going to be the Salazzle once again. She be stanced the hell up over there. And I do just get up the rocks. Which is good because honestly this Salazzle is a bit of a problem for the team here. So the Stealth Rock going to guarantee when this thing comes back in it's going to start taking some chip. And it actually ends up going for the Encore. And I'm like, hey, I, I appreciate that you liked the way I Stealth Rocked there. But it actually doesn't end up helping me out. Now, it's actually also funny, I just switched off Earth Power. I was generally carrying Earth Power on this Torkoal for things like Glamora leads. And I, I switched it for Solar Beams, and now I'm just bad against Poison types. But I get Encored anyway, so, you know, it's fine. And at this point, I just decide to switch into the Samurott. I'm Assault Vest once again. I know that I can take special attacks all day from this thing. And it actually ends up going for the Toxic, which is kind of fine because... Sharp Boy is over here basically just to go ahead and uh, ceaseless edge some stuff and set up some spikes while also getting some good damage in the process. So, I imagine they probably end up switching out here, but I'm going to prioritize getting up the hazards a little bit. I know that obviously they do have the Excadrill in the back with things like a Rapid Spin, but I am fine with that being a problem for future me. So, they actually end up going into the Aloma Mola, big old bulky fish, does take a little bit of chip from a ceaseless edge. And then I'm like, also, I'm actually just going to go ahead and put these here. So I get up some nice little spikes. I have the Stealth Rocket and a layer of spikes. And as I'm looking at the Aloma Mola, it's not a huge problem for the squad because kind of both of my opportunities to sweep are pretty nice against this thing. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, I don't really have much that really wants to come into it. And I'm just going to take this opportunity to just get up another layer of spikes. Again, they can go into Excadrill, but I'm not super worried about an Excadrill Rapid Spin. Mostly just because... Um, I have a matchup with the Livani anyway, so as they end up going for the Protect, I'm like, that is pretty classic of the most freaking annoying fish. This thing just comes in, probably toxics you, protects, and then switches out and regenerates all its damn health. And just, I hate this thing. So, <laughs> I now decide to switch out, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go into something equally as annoying, which is going to be the Jump Pluff. With the Chlorophyll, we're going to be a very speedy fella. So, they actually end up going for the Flip Turn, which... It does work out for them. They can get some uh, switch momentum in terms of a matchup here. And they actually end up going right back into the Salazzle. So, Salazzle, I really obviously don't have a great matchup here. But as I'm looking at it, Jump Pluff probably doesn't have the greatest sweep opportunity. And I'm just going to try to get some value out of it. I decide to go for the Endure. Because as they go for the Flamethrower, boosted by that sun, obviously, just roast and toast the hell out of me. But I do Endure it with one hit or 1 HP, and is now going to activate the Lychee Berry. So, being at 1 HP in this spot is not super ideal, because as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, there was just a Rocky Helmet over there, and I'm trying to gain myself a position to get in the Lee Vanny. It's honestly pretty difficult. Obviously, you can't switch into that thing, so it just kind of comes down to, you know, things being like revenge switch in. But, as I now go for the Acrobatics, I've used up my item, I have a plus one attack, Back comes the freaking fish, and I do get it at least to like half HP, so I'm like, hey, 
Nice. And then I touch his helmet, and then I just die. So jump pluff is gonna go down, but honestly, the jump pluff was just there to try to stir some stuff up anyway. And as the sun does go away, it actually gives me a pretty decent spot to just go into the Torkoal. Obviously, this thing can hit me with some water, but it's not going to hurt much, especially in the damn drought, because this turtle is out here thirsty. So, I figure it's probably in my best interest to just go ahead and take advantage of the fact that this I, I at least do have Solar Beam for this opportunity. So, as they end up going for the Wish, that is perfect, because I can just immediately absorb some light through my freaking shell. And a Solar Beam is, at least should be enough to take care of it. And that is going to be a dead fishy. Hopefully the wish was that it wasn't going to end up in hell, but it surely is. And uh, at this point, now they can go into whatever they like. And I am trying to prioritize a position to get in my freaking bug. So as they go into the Excadrill, I imagine this fella is probably going to go ahead and go for a rapid spin, which is you know, obviously what I would do. It also is air balloon. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead Take this opportunity to go right into the Lee Vanny. I know that the rapid spin is coming. I do not really care about the plus one speed because I should still be faster with chlorophyll anyway. And as I come in, they are going to go ahead and spin around real quick. Does get rid of my hazards, which is once again fine. But I've got myself an opportunity with the bug in here. We've got hella sun turns. And while obviously I cannot fell stinger this thing, I do at least I have a position uh, to try to go for a swords dance. So. Their best damage is going to be something like an Iron Head, which I feel like I should maybe be able to take at least one of. And as I go for the Swords Dance, we are looking extra sharp out here. I get that plus two attack. As they are going to end up going for that Iron Head, knocks me down to 18 HP, which is pretty damn clutch by the bug. And now it is time to light myself on fire. So this time I'm actually working with the Terra Fire with the Terra Blast. Obviously covers and helps a lot more with things and just Steel types in general, but more importantly things like Corviknight. But also, the Excadrill is not going to enjoy some of these sweet, sweet flames boosted uh, by the sun. So, I go for that Terra Fire, outspeed, obviously, and a Terra Blast is going to definitely send this dude right into the old deathbed. So, that is going to take care of Excadrill. We also pop his balloon, just as a, <laughs> a little cherry on top, and uh, no more balloon for you. So, we are now fast, I have plus two attack, and we are going kind of crazy. So, here's the thing, they go back into the Pomai, which I'm thinking... This means that they're probably going to go for a Mach Punch, but I just decided to make the standard play and go for the Terra Blast, as they actually end up switching out, which is probably leading me to believe that they expected me to know they were going to Mach Punch, but instead, as I go for the Terra Blast, they're going to go into the Salazzle, who obviously does resist. However, that is going to absolutely roast the hell out of them. I do get a critical hit. I think that was going to do like around 90% anyway, but that takes care of the Salazzle, and we're just out here burning stuff with the bug and going for the safe option there versus like predicting and so it ends up working out and the bad thing is they go right back into this so i'm like okay well a mock punch is coming but i do have a plan that could end up being hilarious if it works out so they obviously have that priority mock punch does take care of me but not before the levani was able to poke some nice little holes in the squad and this is going to give me an opportunity to do some funny ditto stuff so here's the thing I want to go into the Ditto for one reason. That's because as I transform into him, I'm feeling like I could use their Revival Blessing and bring back the Lee Vanny. So as Lola Jelly comes in, we obviously get that Imposter. We will be faster because I am Choice Scarf. And as I'm looking at it, they actually do not have the Revival Blessing, which is actually kind of upsetting. I was really excited about bringing back Lee Vanny and try to just do it all over again. But it turns out... As I'm looking at their moveset, it's probably going to be like a Choice Banded set. It feels like a, like a, a Choice freaking palm out at this point which is at least nice because that's one way you can use ditto to get some really good intel on not only just all their moves but kind of what they could be working with in terms of items and as i go for the close combat they bring in the galarian slow king so as i'm looking at this matchup i do want to conserve the ditto because honestly it, it's looking pretty nice for the late game ditto is so fun to use and it's just really a good kind of anti-meta pick but i decided to go into the samurai here as i'm assault vest i know i can probably take an attack and as they sludge bomb, it actually puts me right into range to where a poison knocks me to 1 HP. Honestly thought that was going to end up killing me, but that is amazing because now I am faster and even if they want to switch, they can bring in something to take a Ceaseless Edge. But at least I'm going to get the value of having the spikes back up, which is going to be pretty damn nice. So, Dark Type Kitty over here is obviously going to go ahead and resist it, but at least I do get up my spikes, which is going to help with a little bit of chip later on. And uh, now I just get a nice little farewell as I do lose my last HP to the poison there, which is honestly kind of perfect because now as I'm looking at it again, a little side of jelly actually looks really nice here. Because if I know any Meowskarata like I think I do, 
it's surely going to be carrying the like U-turn. And as I go into the Ditto, the plan is basically just to turn into them, and I can either outspeed, and then U-turn knocks it out because it hasn't had a chance to either change its type or, or anything like that. So a U-turn is going to be four times super effective. Or if they switch, I also then just can get a matchup on whatever they want to bring in. So turns out they're actually just going to stay in. A U-turn takes care of Garfield. No lasagna for your grass type ass. And that is amazing. So while I do end up knocking it out with the U-turn, I have to switch into whatever I feel like at this point, and they can see that. So I just decided to go Torkoal, because the wind condition at this point is also, once again, kind of looking like either Slitherwing or just more Ditto shenanigans. But obviously the drought is just going to help uh, with the Protosynthesis in the back. And uh, they have two Pokemon left. So here's the situation. They have the Galarian Slowking who is at full health, and then they also have the Palmot in the back. So, as I know they can't really knock me out here, I'm just going to go for a Lava Plume. I, I need some chip on their Slowking, just because it's going to help out, but also I have the chance for the burn, and I can take Psyshox all damn day. I also end up getting a crit and a burn, which is just honestly pretty damn rude by my turtle. His eyes aren't even open. The disrespect from this Torkoal is real, but I basically, at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to continue just throwing around chunks of lava, which is always fun, and as they go for the Sludge Bomb, that's going to do a bit more damage, because obviously I don't have as much special defense, but also they can live one more Lava Plume. Now, the main matchup here is just kind of like, I need to end this with uh, at least having some Sun Turns up for, you know, Slitherwing to have just as much attack as possible, but there's kind of no way to use up all these turns. The Heat Rock is clutch, and the sun is going to be shining. The, gra the grannies in the back better have the damn sunscreen on because it's going to still be bright out here. So I have two different options. I decide to save the Slitherwing versus the Palmot just because I feel like I can take an attack and also just kind of win the matchup. So as I decide to go into the Ditto, I'm also thinking that not only you know, can I turn into them, I can have the super effective hit on both or, or on the Palmot in the back. As I lock myself into the Psyshock, the idea is that uh, then I can take an attack from the Palmot and then I can kill it with the Psyshock and then Ditto just clutches it out himself. So, as they go into the little fella, this is going to take some spikes damage, which is nice. But also I'm like, okay, all I need to do is live an attack here and we're pretty much good. They're going to end up going for the Double Shock and that is going to be enough to take me out. So, one thing about that is that tells me that this thing is Choice Bandit. And that's going to actually also bring us into a very interesting end game because as it uses up all of its electricity you need to be electric type to be able to use double shock so there's only one way this thing can attack me and that is if it goes for a terra electric to bring it bring it back to electric type so as i bring in the slither wing i do obviously have the choice band with the protosynthesis boost a first impression is not quite enough to kill this thing as a fighting type but it's basically all i got at this point i'm like it cannot attack me unless it's electric and that is going to allow them to now use the latest possible game, Terra, and they are forced, essentially, to go for that Terra Electric if they want to be able to get off an attack, which they need to do other than struggle. So, they put the light bulb on the head, Buddy is back to being Electric type, and that is actually very clutch for me as well, because now it no longer resists the first impression, and I think, regardless, it was going to be a very close roll on whether or not that first impression kills if it doesn't, doesn't Terra there. But that's going to be the end of the game, and honestly, a super wild match. The end of that was amazing. It had a little, it had a little bit of everything. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate the support, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.